The use of an incentive spirometer is prescribed for patients that suffer from or are at risk of developing pulmonary atelectasis. The use of the device promotes deep breathing to improve or maintain lung function. The incentive spirometer can be found in the pod rooms of every nursing unit at St. Mary Mercy Hospital. The devices are individually wrapped and the package includes the device, a mouthpiece, and a sheet that includes the common spirometry goals, a tracking chart, and patient labels. You can use these labels or a Pluey label from the patient's chart, but a patient spirometer should have some indication of who it belongs to. These are to be used by one patient only and then should be sent home with the patient at discharge. The mouthpiece is attached to a flexible and poseable straw. Attach it to the spirometer by pushing the open end onto the protruding cylinder at the bottom of the spirometer. The left side of the device is a handle to allow the patient to hold the spirometer in front of them while breathing. The cylinder in the middle of the device is how the patient will measure the volume of their breath. The markings indicate how many milliliters of air they have inhaled into their lungs. There is a sliding marker attached to the cylinder. This can be moved into position to designate a goal volume, or it can be used to mark the patient's best performance. Depending on the order and reason for the spirometer, sometimes the physician will give the patient a goal volume to attempt to reach. Other times, the patient may just be encouraged to continue to improve their performance. On the right side of the device is a small blue tab encased in a column. Markings around the column show the patient where they should keep the tab floating during inspiration. This is to help the patient maintain a slow inspiration. When the patient inhales through the spirometer, the blue tab will begin to float. If the patient takes a fast, deep breath, the tab will float above the indicating arrows. And if the patient takes too slowly a breath, the indicator won't reach the arrow. A slow, consistent inhale will keep the tab floating steadily between the two arrows. Incentive spirometers are ordered to be used by patients that are experiencing or are at risk of developing atelectasis. Some common diagnoses that will put patients at risk for this, and as a result require the use of a spirometer, are abdominal or thoracic surgery, surgery in patients with COPD, respiratory diseases that restrict lung function, such as pneumonia, emphysema, bronchitis, or COVID-19, patients with neuromuscular diseases or spinal cord injury, or even prolonged bed rest or uncontrolled pain. All of these diagnoses have a common thread. When the patient breathes, they are likely not able to fill their lungs to full capacity. With some of these, the disease process makes breathing difficult, so it makes sense that you would need to do breathing exercises. But with others, such as post-surgically or with prolonged bed rest or uncontrolled pain, the patient will be less likely to take deep breaths because it's painful or difficult. Shallow breathing won't inflate the lungs fully, and the lower lobes of the lungs stop inflating simply from lack of use. The use of the spirometer and encouraging regular deep breathing can retrain the lungs to function at full capacity. So it's important. Neglecting the lungs with these diagnoses can lead to life-threatening complications. The very simple, regular use of these devices can prevent the development of these complications. As a healthcare worker, know what types of patients will benefit from the use of this device and be alert to any orders for their use from the physicians. When they are ordered, it is the responsibility of the nurse to provide the patient with an incentive spirometer from the pod room and to train the patient on how to use it properly and to teach them why they're using it and why that's important. It is then the responsibility of the nurse and the PCT to follow up with the patient and encourage the continued use of this device. So how do you use an incentive spirometer? First, have the patient sit upright. This is a good position to aid in lung inflation. Before they inhale, the patient should exhale to empty their lungs. Then, with their mouth sealed over the mouthpiece, slowly inhale until they can't take in any more air. While they are inhaling, they want to float the tab on the right of the device between the indicator arrows. This shows that they are inhaling at an appropriately slow and steady rate. If they inhale too quickly, the tab will shoot up above the arrows, too slowly, and it won't reach the bottom arrow. When they have inhaled all the air that they can, they should try to hold their breath for at least five seconds, or as long as it takes for the blue plunger to drop back to the bottom of the device. Then slowly exhale. Patients that have had recent surgery may find it painful to do deep breathing. Teach the patient to use a pillow and hold it tightly against their stomach while breathing. This will help ease discomfort. And that is one breath with the incentive spirometer. How often should they be doing this? Unless otherwise ordered with more specific directions, the patient should be using the spirometer for at least 10 breaths every hour. Those don't have to be 10 consecutive breaths, and they probably shouldn't be, because that will likely cause the patient to become lightheaded. They can space the breaths out over the course of an hour. If they're watching TV, a good way to pace the use of the spirometer is to tell them to do two to three breaths during each commercial break. As the nurse or PCT for this patient, you should regularly be asking the patient about their spirometer use. It is very common for patients to avoid using the device because deep breathing can be painful or difficult. Remind them why it's important and encourage them to keep going. Even if it is difficult or painful, they will notice an improvement if they keep at it. 
and if they don't keep at it, it can be very difficult to recuperate further down the line. It is also important to have them demonstrate use of this spirometer for you. The most common misconception is for patients to think that they are supposed to blow into the spirometer and not inhale through it. Make sure they are using the device correctly. Also encourage them, especially if they're having a difficult time. If a doctor set a volume goal for the patient, it is not uncommon that they can't reach that goal initially, and that can be discouraging. If they continue to use the spirometer, they will see improvement and get closer to and eventually reach and possibly exceed that goal. It can be helpful to track volumes to help the patient and the physician see the improvement. In the package, there was a volume log. The patient can use this to log their best performance each day for seven days, but they may want or need to keep closer track, so make sure the patient has the ability and supplies to keep an accurate log of their use. The use of incentive spirometry is an important aspect for the recovery of patients for a variety of diagnoses and procedures. Unfortunately, it is often neglected, ignored, and in some cases never initiated. As nurses and PCTs help your patients with this process, teach them the importance of breathing exercises, how to use the device, and encourage them to keep using it. It may seem like a simple, inconsequential practice, but it can make a huge impact on the patient's recovery and quality of life.